Good morning, Mr. Bill Kinnison. Thank you. Thank you. You get to live with this man, you know. Oh boy, oh boy, do I ever. Oh, Every God. day. <laughs> Every day. It's Sherry, exciting. I'm, I'm very fragile. Yeah. I mean, least little thing and I'd walk off here right now. Oh, okay. You be fragile. Good yep. morning, Jeff Sight. Good morning. He's number one on here. I thought you said HR was. No. Good morning, Don oh. and Cheryl Morin. Good morning to Don and Cheryl. Well, how's our weather today? I thought LA is supposed to get some bad weather. I don't know. Uh, Joe Sumter, good morning. Um, they're supposed to get rain, Charlotte. All right. And the Joe. He says it's the most wonderful time of the week. Yes, it is for him and I both. And Don and Cheryl, happy birthday. They went celebrated uh, Peggy and Tammy's and Tammy. birthday yesterday. Wasn't it also Tammy? Yeah, Tammy yeah. and... and um, well, we want to wish them a happy birthday. And Peggy. And Don says it's raining. Well, and then you got to bet on the mutters. The mutters? The mutters. That's what they talk, talk, call uh, horses that run good in their mud. Oh, okay. Mutters. I think. I'm no... A horse expert, believe me. Good morning, Jeff McLaughlin. Good morning to Jeff. Well, he says good afternoon where he's at, so. Well, he needs to translate himself <laughs> over into our time zone. I think he's an hour ahead of us, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, good afternoon. All right. Well, this is the Gospel According to Kennison, and I am... The man, I am your illustrious host, Bill Kennison, and I have the, uh, I have my partner in crime, beautiful lady, my wife, Sherry's with us. Good morning, Jerry Nicholson and Jack Friedman. Good morning, he said, to go to YouTube.com. Subscribe, subscribe or like it or something. Yes. What you want us to do, subscribe That's or like it? according to Kennison, YouTube page. Like or subscribe. Or both, I don't know. I think you have to subscribe to the Ken, the YouTube page and you have to like the Gospel According to Kennison. All right. Well, let's do that. Because Jack, Jack is not going to quit. No. Derek Kuster, good morning. Good morning to Derek. Derek's met so many friends on our program, I think. He's a good man. It's a good thing. Yep. Good man. I love connecting the dots. Remember, we always used to play that connect the dots. Sure. So that, we connect the people. That, the no, dots. that was uh, one of our sexual. No. <laughs> Don't you remember always trying yeah. to get you to let me connect the dots because you had so many I freckles? So many freckles. Oh boy, he's uh, too TMI, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, also, uh, I brought up HR Kid. I thought that, I thought, I misunderstood. I thought he was first on. But, HR has a girlfriend. Yes. We've been praying quite a while for HR. Also, I guess I need to find out if he wants to be called HR or Henry. I don't know which. I, I'm just here to try to make the people happy. And, uh, who else? There was, oh, we need to pray for the Garcia family. Uh, all of them. She, she battling... Cancer and breast cancer, yes, and she is winning the battle. But all everybody in the house is sick now, so we need to just get rid of sickness. Matter of fact, name of our lesson today is there is healing in love. In love, healing in love. I believe that. If not, stop to think back. Well, if you ever was in love with your wife, or try to think back when you was in love with somebody, and think how good you felt. And everything was going good until she caught you. And then, uh, hell hath no fury, like an angry woman. Especially if you cheated on her. But anyway, uh, so we got the Garcia family. And that's Joe and Sam and, and Debbie. And, uh. Kimberly and Mike in Florida, they take care of his aunt. I wanted to bring, I wanted to bring that up. And for everyone... That you That's take care of tough job. of family members. I'm gonna tell you something. Sharon and I did that for seven years with her mother, and what four years with your father, 
And that's, a, that's not a, that's not a uh, happy time usually. And uh, so my prayers go out to Mike and Kimberly and all of you that are caretakers for people in your family and uh, that God will give you strength and give you healing, not only for them, but for you. You get wore down. You get wore down and tired. So we're going to ask God to give you a shot of adrenaline today. We've been talking about it. Last week we started talking about love. Now, Sherry, we could go, seriously, we could probably go six months and just talk about love. We probably could. That's how massive and expansive the word love is. Uh, we told you last week in our studies of love, it's doubtful that we have come up with anything close to a definition of love. I've never read any that to me completely defined love. What we've been doing is suggesting a few things uh, that love is not. And we do that a lot. Unconsciously, we do it. I brought up a Greek philosopher last week named Zeno. And the Greek philosopher said that the most necessary, and I think I asked you to write this down. If not, I'm asking you now. The most necessary part of learning is to unlearn our errors, unlearn our mistakes. That is the most necessary and essential part of learning. I remember even in school, uh, I've, I've told this so many times, but it's really stuck out to me as a child. I don't know how, what grade I was in, first or second or something. Probably about first grade. And I was one of those kids who couldn't wait to go to school. I was like my grandson, Finnegan. He can't wait. He can't wait. And I was one of those students that I couldn't wait to get to school. Because I wanted to learn. I wanted to read so bad. I can't even tell you. I can remember it. And I was, what, five years old, six years old, maybe? And, uh, but I remember they were teaching us math. One plus one is two. And so on and so forth. Then the teacher said something, and it just stuck with me. She told us, you cannot... Inter interject numbers and letters together. You can't do it. Numbers are numbers with value, and your alphabet is how you communicate. You cannot mix those together. Now, I don't know. It was probably sixth grade, maybe. I don't remember what year or what grade. But I walked into it, and the first thing I heard the teacher say in this class, you're going to learn the numerical value of A plus B equals C. I shot my hand up because half of my life before then, I had been taught you can't put numbers with, with letters. Now I've got a teacher telling me that my first grade teacher was wrong, even though they never said wrong, but in my mind, they were wrong. And I shot up my hand and I told the teacher, I said, sir, you cannot do that. Mrs. Stein, my kindergarten teacher, our first grade teacher, she told me, you can't mix the two of them. And I remember he looked at me and it was a man, man teacher, Mr. Peterson. And I remember he looked at me and said, welcome to algebra. When you get through, and he never did say the gal was wrong, Mrs. Stein was wrong. He stayed on the positive and said, but when you get through with this class, you'll be able to put the alphabet and the letters in with, with numbers and come up with a numerical value. Now, we have... We have so many erroneous thoughts of love. Uh, we've thought of love as an emotion. Uh, we've thought of it as sentimentality. 
as a sexual experience. A lot of people confuse sex with love. And then as we We believe actually you can sometimes fall in and out of love. I, I don't personally believe that. I think when you truly love someone, you're going to love them probably the rest of your life, I hope. Now, love is life expressing its fullness. That's exactly what love is. Life is Love is life expressing its fullness. My stepfather, Dr. A.D. Marnie, used to say all the time, I think it's one of his favorite sayings, if you're not loving, you're not living. If you're not loving, you're not living. Folks, he was right. And some of you right now that are alone, some of you that you don't have that, that love partner, or what people call Soulmates. I don't know about the soulmates thing, but, but you know, you need this lesson. You need to have love in your life. If you're not loving, you're just getting by. Somebody said, well, how do I fall in love? Oh, it will find you. You won't have to look for it. When you're ready, it will find you. Under the sustaining influence of love, the physical body is always at its best. Always. When you're in love, your organs are good. You get healthy. You win the lottery. You go to Vegas and win the jackpot. You never did before, but now you're in love. That changes the rules. You see, more people are sick. And I checked this out, and it's absolutely the truth. Most people are sick from lack of love in their lives than all the other causes of sickness put together. Think about that. When Jesus emphasized such things as love one another, love your neighbor as yourself, love your enemy, I want you to listen to this. Man, that's tough. I don't know if you've really been upset with somebody. That's not to bring up the that's not the time to bring up how you should love them. Because you're not going to be receptive to it. But when Jesus did that, he was dealing with the healing power of love. He was telling you how to be healthy. But you're going to have to love. You're going to have to love. He wasn't saying that you should be loving and forgiving because other people deserve. For you to do it? No. No. That's not why you do it. He knew that you cannot afford not to dwell in the fullness of love, which is the key to health and healing. Some of you that have battled sickness, it seems like almost your whole life. Stop and think. Stop and, and look what your attitude has been for a long time. If you have a sick attitude, you're going to have a sick body. Believe me. You see, he was saying that you can't afford to dwell on what others do. I used to be horrible about that when I was young. Not to dwell on it, but you must guard how you react to what they do. It's not what they do that's important. How you react to it is what's important. He knew that you cannot afford, like I just told you, not to dwell in the fullness of love. Man is created so that he cannot survive in health and wellness without love. That's how you're created. You're created a vessel of love. Look at the babies. No baby comes into this world hating no baby comes into this world uh, mad at people. That's why we love babies so much. Because they are, as we were, created in and of love. Anything less than love in the mind and in the heart of man.
causes tension and stress. Anything less than love. So what are you walking in today? Sherry and I are really involved in, in cancer research. As you know, she's a, a breast cancer survivor. And so we, I felt like that I owed something back to people. Since God took care of my wife and Dr. John West took care of my wife, I think that God takes care of us. But they found in cancer, you know what the biggest cause of cancer, period? Stress. Stress. Where do you create the most stress? By how you feel negatively about people. That's stressful. That will make you sick. Hatred. Bitterness. And even unfriendliness. Frustrates the healing process. Interfering with the normal renewal of cells and the flow of, of vital healing fluids. That's how important it is. Consider the person. Think about the person who receives news that a close relative is dead. Suddenly the person mysteriously manufactures and releases something. A quantity of saline liquid called tears. I remember watching a Seinfeld episode years ago. And this Jerry was dating this young lady and, and she told him that uh, that he, he didn't have any feelings. And he needed to get in touch with his feelings. So Jerry's confused. So he goes the other way and starts becoming mean and everything else to express his feelings, which is not what she was talking about. Anyway, so they break up and Jerry's heartbroken and, and he's sitting there talking, I think, to George. And this stuff starts coming out of his eyes. He said, I don't know what this is. What is this? It's salty. What is this? And I remember Elaine goes, oh my God, he's in love. That's what love will do. The, steer, the tears, when you hear about the, your loved one passing, the tears were not there in the system before the bad news came. Yet in a few moments, that has brought into existence enough liquid has, has come out of your eyes to soak a handkerchief. The same process is involved in the creation of fluids that eat at the lining of your stomach and poison various parts of your system. Young mothers, now listen, young mothers are often told to encourage happy and contented and loving thoughts when she's feeding her baby at her breast because her feeling can actually change the chemical constitution of her breast milk. Isn't that amazing? There are known records of, of a mother engaged in heated arguments and indulging in emotions while she's feeling feeding her baby at her breast because her feeding can actually change. So there's records of where they've had these heated arguments and indulging in emotions of anger and hate and bitterness while feeding the baby, in which the baby actually died. This is a case that actually happened and has happened many times. The baby actually died of poisonous breast milk toxins that were stirred up with her arguing and her hatred and, and her meanness and it cost her the life of her baby. Conditions of disease can be set up not by infective sources outside the body but through the action of the emotions which release or create toxins within the body. The body contains, I'm going to stay long on this particular area, 
The body contains bacteria which are healthy and friendly to the system. The so-called saprophytes that's in you. But a change in the chemical composition of the fluid in which these benign bacteria live may possibly convert friendly bacteria into hostile ones. Saprophytes are parasites. People have puzzled over the idea of God as the origin of all life because of the conclusion that he must have caused or created disease, germs, and illnesses. I'm sure you've run into people going, if God's so good, why don't you tell me why he created that stuff? Well, it's more likely that God, the creative process, makes all bacteria good and that it is the negative emotions of anger or worry or fear that have poisoned the system and brought hostile organisms into being that enter into your body. Life is not simply a force acting within and upon the body. Studies have proven that plants grow faster and better in a home with a loving atmosphere. It's a tremendous burden to dislike people or to be involved in bitterness or hatred or condemnation. When I was, when I was young, maybe even as a child, I loved to argue. When I got older, I loved to argue. When I got to be a teen, I, I loved to, I loved to argue. But you know what? It's a burden. It's a burden to dislike people. It's tough to be involved in bitterness or hatred or condemnation. I remember one of the first times that I had to make a conscious decision. My brother Kevin had, had been murdered there at my mother's house. First time in a few years, all of us had been there at the same time. And I remember God speaking to my heart a few days afterwards. He said, you can, you can handle this two ways. You can hate. You can look for whoever you thought did this. You can get even. You can take their life. You can do all that. Or you can think God, that you had 28 years with him. And you know what I elected to do? I elected to rejoice and to thank God. I had my little brother, which was like my son, with me for 28 years. And I've never regretted that. I've never regretted that. I don't know who murdered him. They don't know unless somebody would just confess, they said. It's the only way they would find out. But you know what? It's not what happens. It's how we react to it. And I decided I was going to react and rejoice. I'll see him again. I'll embrace him again. I'll get to see my boy again. But it's tough to carry that burden of dislike and a hatred and forgiveness or unforgiveness and condemnation. It's tough. Tough to do that. Some people try to justify themselves by saying, but you should know what he has done to me or, or the way he treated me. This just reflects the attitude that life is loved from the outside in. We are happy. We are surrounded by happy experiences. And we are upset if conditions are disturbing. It's the way most people live and think. That's how, exactly how they do it. It's also why there is so much indigestion and in heart and circulatory ailments in our Western culture because of the hatred. It's so comforting to know that life is lived not from the outside in, from the inside out. Success starts on the inside. Healing starts on the inside. Happiness starts on the inside, not on the outside. 
We think, man, if we won the lottery, or if I did this, or I did that, I'd be so happy. Only if it comes from within. Only if it, come, it comes from within. You see, it's so comforting to know that life is controlled by you, not by others. You should begin the day by remembering, in the beginning, love. In the beginning, love. I remember I was pastoring in Rockford, Illinois. I had this, uh, this uh, kind, wonderful, loving woman that attended our church. She asked me one day, would you come and, and talk to my son? And I said, well, what's going on? And said, well, he won't come out of the, bath, the bedroom. Says he hates God. He don't believe there's a God. And uh, he talked about killing himself and committed suicide. And I said, I'll, I'll come over. So I remember I came over and I knocked on the bedroom door and, and uh, he wanted to know who it was and then eventually I talked him into letting me come into his bedroom. And I remember he was sitting on that bed and I talked to him for a while about what's going on? Why are you feeling like this? Then we got near the end I said, you want me to pray for you? He said, I don't believe in God. I said, Okay. Do you believe your mother loves you? Then he got all defensive and kind of bowled up. I know. I know my mother loves me. Don't, don't talk about my mother. I know she loves me. I said, well, then let's do this. Let's pray that your mother's love that she has for you. Let's pray to that love to help you. And so we did. Joined hands with him pretty soon. He started crying. He got up and, and has just held me and just wept. Then we opened the door and he went out and embraced his mother. And she had been listening to this out, outside of his bedroom. I got ready to leave and she went outside and said, I got to ask you something. How did him praying for my Love to him, help him. I said, because God is love. He just didn't realize that he was praying to that God inside of you that loves him. And he's going to change. He's going to be a different man, I can tell you, from being here this morning. Why? He understood your love. He understood God's love, even though he didn't realize it at the time, that that's God's love. You should begin the day. Oh, football must be coming on. You're getting all excited. Oh, no, I know what's coming on. <laughs> Not football. Tennis. Yeah, tennis. See, we have problems in our marriage, folks, that people don't even know about. <laughs> no, no. I fell in love with Sherry over 53, 54 years ago. Still love her today. Probably love her more now because I put her through so much. You know, you're supposed to go, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that. <laughs> what is going on in my world? Yes, you put me through a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sure have. Let me wrap this up. See, love is the creative force at the root of all things. It's love. That's what creates. We need to make up our minds that no matter what the day brings, we will identify with love. Then we'll know what Jesus meant when he said, in this world you have tribulations, but I have overcome the world. How did he do it? Through love. Through love. Heavenly Father, I thank you for opening their minds this morning. And I thank you for those that need a healing touch. Let love rise up inside of them. Lord, let them learn to, to forgive and not let hatred and bitterness affect them. They'll know true joy, true happiness, true success, true health through their love. 
Now give you all the praise. Amen. Love. Yes, Mike Boyle, he put lots of little emojis laughing because he knows. What does he know? When he put it up there, when I said I've been through, you put me oh. through a lot. <laughs> Well, I'm not big enough. Right? Love you I, all. I run through that window right there. Love all of you. I love you. Sherry loves you. God loves you. And next month is Valentine's. So they've got a whole month to celebrate. Special love. Well, I'm going to take our my phone out there one of these weeks and show them our door. I've never heard of a, of a Valentine's wreath, but our daughter... Uh, Got this for us, and it is, it's beautiful. We've had it. Uh, it's been hanging up there since uh, Ever January. since Christmas. Well, well after, after January. Christmas. After yeah. New Year's, because we start taking down the tree immediately. All right. I'm sure you all just love to hear all that information. Have a great week. And you have a great week. God love you. I love you. Sherry loves you. God bless America. And don't forget, God bless Israel. <laughs>